today afternoon will be by Dr. Schacher Jodet. Uh, he is from uh, Austria, from Mont Montana University, Leoben. And uh, he is the expert for studying materials by additive manufacturing. And the title of his lecture, uh, Fracture Toughness of Textured Alumina Grains and Grain Boundaries Determined by Micro Cantilever Bending Tests. Fine, Dr. Schlecker, please. Oh, um, it is. Thank you very much for this nice introduction. I hope you can see and hear me. Um, I just have to mention that I'm still a PhD student, but <laughs> OK. Um, today, I'm going to talk about the fracture dust toughness of textured alumina grains and grain boundaries. And I will show how we can use this data to understand the fracture behavior of microscopic or the microscopic fracture behavior of ceramic laminates with embedded layers. And first of all, I would like to thank the organizing committee for giving me this great opportunity to um, have an invited talk today at this conference. And secondly, I would like to mention that this work was done in collaboration with the Institute of Material Research at the Slovak Academy of Science in Kosice. Um, let me start with a brief introduction. As we all know, ceramics are widely used due to their outstanding properties, such as high hardness, wear resistance, temperature resistance, cor corrosion resistance, as well as the interesting functional properties. And therefore, they are nominated for a specific demanding application. For instance, in the sector of the aerospace, biomedicine, but also microelectronics or energy applications. <clears throat> However, there are a few limiting factors for the, for the use of ceramics, which needs to be considered if you design with such systems. So one of them is especially the low fracture toughness due to the fact that ceramics are brittle, which means if fracture occurs, it uh, fractures uh, catastrophically. The second case is the, the strength variability. And this is due to the presence of defects. Um, if we think about defects, which can be either on the surface due to machining, handling, and so on, as well as volume defects, which are, for instance, bores or agglomerates, glassy phase pressing defects, and so on, um, we know that this can affect the strength uh, characterization. And due to the fact that these defects differ in their size, shape, and location, the ceramics cannot be described with only one single value. Therefore, we need to do a, a, a statistical analysis, like the Weibull statistics. And what we can see here is that we have strength distribution of, a, of several samples, and depending on this, we see that the failure stress is indirectly proportional to the critical defect size, which means that high critical size of the of the these defects will uh, reflect the low strength value. And the motivation of our research at the institute is how we can we overcome this brittleness. So let's say if a, a crack initiates, that we can somehow act against crack propagation or even arrest it. So to avoid catastrophic failure. And in this, by doing so, we are uh, taking a look on the nature and how, what we can learn from it. So if we, take, if we see here, we have uh, such an acre, which is composed of uh, um, calcium carbonate platelets uh, surrounded with an organic layer. This organic layer is about 1%, and it is uh, it allows to shield the crack along to this platelet interfaces to enhance the fracture energy. So we would like to learn from it and mimic it in more technical ceramic systems to act against the crack propagation. And now I come to the actual content of this talk. So first of all, I would like to give an overview of what has been done in the field of bioinspired designs. Then I will focus on ceramic laminates, which is more or less um, the work of my PhD thesis, and how can we enhance the damage tolerance. And this can be either to architectural designing. So how can we build up the layers to uh, 
uh, group the properties. And secondly, I will show you how if we go inside one layer, how can we improve still the properties by tailoring the microstructure. And the word here is texturing. So mimicking these, these natural systems what we have seen before. And to understand how the correct propagates along these layers or these textured grains, um, we were using this microscale fracture toughness evaluation to understand the microscopic fracture behavior. And last but not least, I'm going to show you how we can go with the novel um, 3D printing techniques so far. So if you think about natural system, uh, natural materials such as um, wood, bones, nacre, they all have in common that they are hierarchically arranged from macro to micro scale, which means if we take a look on nacre, um, there are several toughening mechanisms and different length scales. If we go inside the microstructure, we, we can see that these calcium carbonate platelets are somehow connected with mineral bridges, with aspirates, and also with this organic layer I've already mentioned before. And all these have an effect on the toughening during fracture at the microscale level. And together with the macroscopic um, grain um, like platelets pull out, it enhances, so to say, the fracture energy. And the result can be seen here. If you take a look on the fracture toughness on nacre, it is much higher than its constitutions, like this nacre protein, so calcium carbonate, and uh, sorry, this aragonite, this calcium carbonate, and this organic layer. And there's much research done in mimicking this by using nacre like alumina. And, and since the strength and fracture toughness are mutually exclusive, so we are thinking about what, what can we do to, to enhance both. And what has been done so far from other research groups, they were focusing on concepts for nacre like alumina, and they played with the compositions of this brick, alumina, and mortar, uh, the second structure. And if you take a look on this diagram, we can see on, on this landscape that by using the last two ones with more mineral phases, Buril, or the research group of Buril showed you can uh, achieve relatively high fracture toughness and, and a good uh, strength value. So the question is, how, how can we improve both the resistance to crack propagation and the mechanical reliability, by, even by severe conditions, which means at high temperatures, or if we let a crack start, how can we um, stop it? which is important for, as instance, conduct applications. And we are focusing on the ceramic layer by layer architectural designing. And together with this architectural designing and the microstructure, we were looking for um, better systems. So let's start with the architectural designing. If we think about a, a layered system, which are strongly bonded, and if it undergo differential shrinkage from going down from sintering temperature to room temperature, stresses arises within the layers. And the strain mismatch can be either due to phase transformation, as is in the case of Ziconia, chemical reactions, for instance, in gorilla classes, or um, most commonly in ceramics, the difference in the CTEs. If we take again a closer look, and we assume that the, the CTE of, of, of the material A in blue is higher than B, and we would cool it down, we would introduce uh, denser residual stresses in the surface layer and compressive residual stresses in the embedded layer. And they, these residual stresses can be analytically calculated or estimated. And what is important to see, say is that especially the thickness ratio, volume ratio plays a big role in designing. So we want to use these compressive residual stresses. So on depending on the um, position of the compressive residual stresses either outside which is to enhance the mechanical resistance or to enhance the strength to shield the crack on the top surface. This is important for scratch resistance and contact applications, or as well known from these handy displays. And <clears throat> we are more focusing on this damage tolerance system, which means we are embedding the layers uh, by using tailored compressive residual stresses to act against crack propagation. And as you can see here, this is a thermal shock samples that cracks which are initiated at the surface are stopped in these embedded layers due to this acting of the compressive residual stresses. And we would like to, to know how, how can we further improve the system 
um, or the, the, the damage tolerance. And the, the answer is texturing the embedded layers. And with texturing can be done by the date casting process. And here you have a slurry with aluminum, small aluminum particles, and you add um, some seeds, let's say a, a, a larger platelets with a specific aspect ratio. And if you align this during the tape casting process, and then you have to do um, so stacking and vignette suppressing and binder burnout. And last but not least, the sintering condition. And after sintering, you can you will see that the big grains of these platelets will grow on the consumption of the small, which is known from the Oswald ripening. And what you can get at the end are such uh, textured or uh, elongated grains which we can use for our systems. And here we can see our tape caster, what we have at the Institute. So, and if you compare such textured grains with the Equiax system, and they can look on such a fracture surface, we can see um, that the crack is somehow hollowing more or less the, 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 the uh, grain um, interfaces or the grain boundaries. So, which reflects in the more step-like fractures can be seen here. And you can even achieve a improvement of fracture toughness of 10%. If we would combine this system in a layered way, um, then you have, in, as we know from before, the crack arrest due to compressive, compressive residual stresses and some kind of deflections again along the basal grain boundaries. And this is due, uh, th this is what we are interested in right now. And this is a recent research where we applied conduct damage uh, experiments. And we showed that due to the effect of micro cracks, which is due to sliding of the grain boundaries of textured grains together with an effect of crack deflections along the basal grain boundaries, um, the damage tolerance can be significantly enhanced. And to summarize, we see more or less a favored crack propagation along the textured grains. And now we are interested why it is as it is. And for this, we did uh, this microscale fracture darkness measurement on textured grain boundaries and compared it with um, single textured grains. And here's just a short overview where I'm going through from starting from the sample preparation to evaluation. Then I will show how it was actually milled, then about the fracture surfaces and the actual results. And if we start with with the sample fabrication here, can we see how this microstructure of our investigated sample looks like? So as I've mentioned, these are textured, which means that those are the basal grain boundaries are perpendicular to the 0, 0, 1 direction. Or let's say the 0, 0, 1 direction is um, perpendicular to the casting direction of the textured sample. And we did uh, prior to the study uh, um, XAD measurements to quantify the texture grade and what we see here from XRD measurements and especially the 0006 and the 0012 uh, um, plane is dominant in this microstructure. And this is corresponding to the 00 set uh, orientation of the textured grains. So and if we would calculate a lodging factor, which is more or less a cal cal uh, calculation um, where we can quantify the texture grade we could see that the, the, the texture grade is 80%. So you imagine the logical factor of 100% would mean perfect texture without any disalignment. And this is well comparable with other textured materials found in the literature. And the question right now is, how can we um, test this basal grain boundaries? Because we are more, what, what we saw actually is that the crack is favoring along these grain boundaries. And here's our sample of study. First of all, we need to distinguish between prismatic surface direction and the basal surface. This prismatic one is like what you see, what we see here from the microstructure. And we polished it. And after thermal etching, we went to the actual fitting process. And now there are two main directions. The first is where those cantilevers are aligned over several uh, grain boundaries in C direction, which is uh, the 0, 0, 001 direction. And the notch is perpendicular to this C direction. So you actually notch in basal orientation of the grains. And the other case where we 
we would like to introduce cantilevers inside one such a textured grain, which is aligned perpendicular to the zero zero one direction. And the, uh, if the fracture starts at the, at the notch, you, we would see the fracture along the um, prismatic facets here. And by doing so, we started with the tip milling of, um, of the actual notch. So this was done by using a low current of 50 picoamps to avoid some kind of ion damage and so on. And we introduced a 10 microns notch at the beginning for 30 seconds. This reflects to a depth length of about 100 uh, to 300 nanometers. And afterwards, we used the coarse milling with higher current to um, fabricate these branches and the coarse shape. And with a finer or uh, a lower current, we use the milling of the designed size. Uh, but, but right now, the, the, the cantilever is still connected at the bottom with the material. So we shift um, the, the sample and we fit from a um, Dillman of about 52 degrees to get such a pentagonal shaped notch, uh, shaped cantilevers. And after uh, the successful fitting, we did the sample under the nano indenter and tested it with a spheric tip of one micron. So fractured it. And here can we see schematically how that this um, cantilever looks like. So as I've mentioned, we have a pentagonal shape. And uh, important is to measure the distance and this crack length as uh, depth, as well as the distance of the loading point for the calculation. And we calculate according to the linear elastic fracture mechanics. So where we see that this fracture darkness is depending on sigma, which is the fracture stress. So right now it is important to emphasize that this is the actual um, so, uh, surface stress at a specific location. But we need to consider the, the surface state, uh, the, the, the stress state at the notch. And to reflect this, there is a need to calculate a so called shape factor. And yeah, this alpha is the notch length, which, which will be um, measured after fracture. And how can we calculate such a shape factor for the evaluation? We did a finite element analysis. So we modeled uh, this pentagonal shaped cantilever, assumed isotropic material behavior. And we applied a load of two millinewtons for different crack sizes. So we introduced crack sizes between um, 100 and 1,000 nanometers. And for calculate, um, then we calculated numerically um, the critical stress and density factor by using J integral and divided it by the analytical one from. Uh, uh, from the calculation. This was, was on the assumption of the fracture stress according to the Euler-Bernoulli beam theory. And this ratio gives us some points, and this can be fitted by a polynomial of fourth order. And this is the actual shape function we need to consider for the calculation. And as we can see, the shape function is dependent on the notch length, or we have normalized the notch length for better. Um, calculation, easier calculation. So, and what we can, what did we actually get from the milling? As we can see here, we have on the one hand milled the, the cantilever inside the grain. So, you can assume that this is an actual big grain with the notch perpendicular, uh, parallel to the zero, zero, one direction, which means after fracturing, we would initiate fracture along one of the prismatic planes, um, which is which could be either here or here. In the case of the cantilever milled at the at the at over several grain boundaries, we see that it is aligned in C direction, which means that the actual fracture will start at the C plane of such an alumina crystal structure. And yeah, it is important to note that it is not easy to notch the cantilever directly at the grain. So we need to take a look for really a sufficient grain, so a big one where we can notch it. And on the side, we can see the pentagonal uh, surface before fracture. So this is actually here. And what we can see here, the natural porosity of the microstructure itself. So what we 
what we can also see here is that the cantilevers are a bit different in their design sizes. So they are designed in the same way, but the, the actual meal cantilevers are a bit different. And so compare the fracture behavior, let's say a small and a larger cantilever, there is a need to convert the, the force um, displacement data, data, what we get from the nano indentation to, uh, so to say, effective stress strain data. And what we can see here that all the curves from the grains as well as the grain boundaries show linear elastic fracture behavior, which means that this calculation, even at micro scale, according to this linear elastic fracture behavior, is valid. Furthermore, we can somehow um, estimate by dividing sigma to epsilon the, the stiffness of the cantilevers. But it is important to note that this is, so to say, an effective Young's model because we have the cantilever notched. And so this do not reflect the actual uh, Young's model of the material, but this is not the focus of this research. So, and at the end, I can show you how the fracture surfaces actually look like. So if you take a look on the grain, we can see here the very nicely the introduced notched. So from these surfaces, we can um, measure the notches, make an average value and use it for the calculation. What we can further see it is that the remaining fracture surfaces is really smooth. So I have uh, compared it with uh, experiments in the, the literature and this is typically for fracture along of this prismatic M or A plane. So it's either this plane or that plane. If we take a look on the fracture surfaces of the grain boundaries, we see here again the notch. And again, that the, the, the remaining fracture surface is really smooth. Um, if we would fracture a C plane, which is the case, it would like show more step-like fracture according to the surface energies of these C planes. So, but here we actually fracture along of the intersection of the grain boundaries. And this is the, the reason why it looks so really, really smooth. And what, what can we learn actually from this measurement? If you would calculate the fracture toughness for five cantilever each in both directions, we would get a fracture toughness of 3.3 square root meter, um, megapascal square root meter for the grain and the 2.3 for the grain boundaries. So what we can see is that the actual microscale fracture toughness of the grains inside is about 40% higher than the one of the grain boundaries. And this is, so to say, we can use this to explain why the crack is favored along this basal plane boundaries, because these weak basal boundaries show um, a lower fracture toughness. If we compare this microscale K1C, with the uh, um, macro scale tests what have been done by Iwasa and Brad, we can see that it's very comparable from the micro scale to macro scale level. They also fractured along of the M plane. So we can assume that in total, we, 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 we selected more M planes. So if you think about the designing again, we could use this He Hutchinson model, what is known from which, which gives some, so to say, a, a, the, the, the borderline between deflection and penetration of dissimilar or materials or platelets. We could see if we would uh, convert our microscale fracture toughness value to critical energy values, make the ratio out of it, we could see where we actually are if we are in the monolithic case. The monolithic case, it seems like we get a value here. It seems like that we are in a penetration area. So which means that the crack is more or less, it is following somehow the, the, the grains, but not significantly deflections can be seen because it is more like failure to, to penetrate. But if we would combine this microstructure again in this um, in this um, um, uh, multi-material design where we have an in, um, additional contribution of the corrosive residual stresses, we could see something different. So because it was shown in the work of Bavlaka et al, that by the in, uh, in, uh, introducing compressive residual stresses within the textured layer, we could, or this curve could be shifted upwards. And if you see if this compressive residual stresses are high enough, 
we could see that we are actually in the deflection area here, which means this explains why the crack is here following this path along a long deflection along the basal grain boundaries in this multi-layer architecture. So, so what we have learned that we, by knowing that the fracture toughness at the grain boundaries is much lower, we can understand why the crack wave is, uh, is following this way, what we can experimentally see at the microscopic fracture process. And furthermore, by using microscale data, we can even design um, the textured microstructure. Because if you think about um, elongating the grains very, very long, you would uh, get a long crack path along the basal planes. And you can, we can also think about what, what, what about uh, introducing bores at the grain boundaries to additionally weakening it, or even to put some second phases with which are weaker. Then we can build it on our laminate again to use the effect of compressive residual stresses. And what is also interesting for us, how does it work with 3D printing technologies? And at the end, I would like to show you how we are so far with 3D printing. So this is the work of a colleague of mine, Anna Hofer. She were able to fabricate textured materials by using stereolithographic 3D printing technologies and showed even um, interesting mechanical properties. And I did the study not actually on texture, but on combining on 3D printed um, alumina and zirconia toughened alumina in a multi-layer architecture to use the compressive residual stresses on the top surface to shield the mechanical strength. And so we can, got, we can see that it increases the mechanical strength to, or the fracture strength to one GPA by using residual stresses. And so now I'm at the end of my talk and I would like to thank especially Dr. Dama Shanadi and Institute of Material Research for this very uh, fruitful collaboration and I would also thank for the funding. And now I'm happy for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much for that really very nice presentation. Unfortunately, we have time only for one question. Ah, but Professor Scheigeli, please. I have very one short. Do you think that the thermal expansion coefficient mismatch is only parameter which influence the introduction of the internal stresses to these layered materials. Because I, I will follow with my, my uh, experience. Also, the, uh, the sintering rate is very important. When you put together two different grain size of starting powder the, with the same thermal expansion coefficient, even you get the uh, bending when you have just the two layers mm -hmm. yeah. on the, another. And I, I, the, my suggestion is the theories, uh, theory which is developed also in your institute need to go also this direction. I think that's very important okay. to understand the, the system. Yeah, thank you very much for this input. Okay, so time is running. May I ask you, uh, Bjorn, take over the managing the next. Thank yes. you very much.